we'll move on to the Irish Examiner this morning because uh, they lead with a story you want to chat about. It's uh, Dan Dare. A stunning stage win means two are already a success for Dan Martin and uh, a success it is. Uh, an unbelievable performance uh, from Dan Martin yesterday. It's a sensational uh, conclusion to his stage six at uh, the Moor de Britannia, the Wall of Brittany as they call it, Johnny. Uh, a big climb at the end. Martin breaks away with 1,200 metres to go. Uh, Surge is ahead of the field. Uh, Sky and BMC try to catch him. They can't and uh, Dan Martin holds out for the win. Uh, I think we can actually hear uh, a little bit of uh, Dan Martin. Uh, he was speaking to reporters after the stage win yesterday. To be honest, my first thought is that I really hope my wife hasn't just gone into labour. You know, <laughs> she's a, it's a yeah, it's a great feeling to actually get a win again. So many second places at the tour since the last one, and uh, yeah. Also, I, I was a bit nervous because of the headwind. I didn't think it was going to happen, you know, but. Then uh, the race went so hard at the first part of the climb that I saw everybody's on the limit and there's no teammates left, so why not have a try? So I did. Yeah, Dan Martin there speaking after winning the stage. It's his second time winning uh, a stage at the Tour de France and he's come close a couple of other times. Uh, like he finished sixth overall last year. He came second uh, on the Planche de Béfi last year, which was uh, kind of one of those amazing stages where he came so close to winning the, winning the that exact stage and like coming sixth overall. He was really in the picture for the entire thing last year, chasing down Chris Froome, but it didn't happen for him. Then 2016, you had uh, another second place and a second place as well on the stage in 2015. So a couple of runners up spots over the last couple of years this was coming and it was uh, an impressive feat um, like wasn't a great st start to the season for him as a whole but this has really made it for him and like his missus is expecting twins as well I think he spoke about that afterwards they got a positive scan on that yeah. Um, so good times for Dan Martin at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah, I think she's due in October. So he was saying afterwards, I hope she doesn't go into to labour after all of this. It's like it's an unusual, one, isn't it? Like uh, watching the Tour de France, uh, kind of uh, from a, a neutral perspective and, and kind of sitting there. Like I, I love watching it. I love watching every stage whenever I possibly can. There's something uh, beautiful about it, obviously, but also the competitive nature of it when it gets to the last couple of kilometres, especially inside ten kilometres. I'm usually glued to the TV to see what happens, and. It's like I wouldn't have necessarily been into the tour as much when Martin last won uh, a stage mm. at the tour, which was the last time an Irish person won a stage at the tour. So it's an odd feeling because, like, naturally we're always we're, we're always casting a, a skeptical eye on the entire thing. And when an Irishman wins it, you don't really know how to when, when they win a stage, you don't really know how to feel. That's the terrible thing about cycling now, isn't it? You know, it's just hard to. Um, I, I guess just with so much controversy, I, I I would have virtually no interest in cycling. Yeah. For, for, a lot for that reason because I don't know what to believe anymore, you know. Um, and I would say there are probably issues in football that people, you know, aren't aware of as well. And we, we, we don't think about that. And we, you know, it's not fair on cyclists. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd be, I'd just be very skeptical. It's just so extreme that, you know, um, um, like in general, like I mean, it's it's not like nothing to do with Dan Martin or anything. It's just absolutely like once you're casting a, a skeptical eye in a sport in general. Uh, absolutely, you know, it's, it's just a strange sensation. It's like when me you see trying to thing. tell people about horse racing that it's not corrupt. Like, and you know, I I might be telling people till they're blue in the face, but I'm not going to be able to convince some people that racing isn't you know um, entirely free of a bit of skullduggery, like um, yeah, which it obviously yeah. isn't. But it, it's a bit like that. It's just kind of some people won't. Some people, I mean, the amount of tax drivers that tell me Irish racing is corrupt, like, you know, I'd never bet that, and I'm like, well, sure, I'm not going to convince you otherwise in the course of this cab ride, but I guess cycling's in a place that it's going to be hard to convince people. Well, that's the thing. That, that's yeah. the thing. It, it, it's and I'm by no means suggesting Dan Martin did anything, you no, know. No, of course I, not. I, um, but, it, and and I, I, I think for, for, that, for, for the journeyman cyclist to just to win a stage must be terrific. Yeah, like, I, I think... For Dan Martin, I think he's like a, a good bit above a journeyman cyclist, but like he will be a contender. He he obviously had a very bad start to this tour. Obviously, had a brilliant, brilliant tour last year uh, with Team UAE at the moment, and like all his teammates were just delighted from he's clearly mm. their team leader and all that sort of stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see how he performs once he comes into the mountains. Like he said, he was like running on adrenaline really yesterday. The way nobody caught him, he went so early. Like he, he was twelve hundred meters to go, and on You're that thinking walk, he's gonna he's gonna you know he's yeah. gonna die and fade, and he just holds on. Yeah, like it's hard to kind of appreciate it on TV, but there is one uh, camera angle when they're coming up right behind the breakaway when you can actually see 
the, the gradient, and it is steep. It is a steep finish. Like he came, I think he came second on the Wall of Brittany as well a couple of years ago. The last time uh, a stage finish there. So like it is it, in fair. Like all things considered, it is a, a remarkable achievement. It, it, like added to Sam Bennett, like it, it's just a fact that it has been a successful year for for Irish cycling, regardless of what your view is. It's becoming very like, popular in general in Ireland as well in terms of the actual uh, activity. Well, na naturally, I, I like I guess it's the same with any water sports. It's the same with like we've got plenty of like gradients ourselves in the mm. country like I like even um, you know Reardon was doing a piece with him in the Irish Times last month which we actually want to talk about now because he, he was just saying that he, he was just going up through slopes in and around Ireland down in Wicklow and stuff and that was part of his tune up after the mm. Dauphiné or maybe before the Dauphiné before the Tour de France uh, and that Ireland is actually a good enough place for a GC contender in the Tour de France to actually train now it's not heavy heavy training but it is mm. training of some sort. You can keep yourself fine-tuned here. So you're right, it, it's it's a country conducive to, to success in the sport. But when it comes to, to Dan Martin, like naturally you have to apply the same scrutiny of him as you of have course. to of whoever you're the cyclist. And the one thing that you could definitely use to, use as a stick to beat him with is just his attitude towards doping. And he, he's spoken about it before. Paul Kimmage did an interview with him last year in the Sunday Independent we had some interesting views on seeing doping firsthand and his relationship with it and how he was kind of abhorred by teammates even suggesting that they would do anything like that and how he's very principled and would never ever uh, touch it uh, and then this year uh, he was asked about um, Chris Froome last month and that came up in the paper review on Sunday with Joe Dermot and Paul Kimmage at Ballyliff and have a look at this and look at the winner. You do look at the winner because everybody has a contribution to make here, including our own Irish professionals. I mean, Christ almighty, I saw an interview with Dan Martin last a couple of weeks ago where he's saying he can't comment on the Froome case because there's a clause in his contract where he's going to get... But you, but look, you, you're not going to get it. You can't have it both ways. You just stand up for clean sport uh, and express your honest views about this or, or you don't. And the result is what, what we've seen in the last couple of days at the tour. When you don't do that, you know, you guys get a lot of flack on off the ball for, for not interviewing them. And, um, you know... It's difficult to interview them and know on what premise you're doing the interview on. Well, absolutely. What are we assuming here? But what, 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 well, what you're perfectly entitled to ask them is the state of the game and, you know, to ask them about doping in the sport and where that is now. But if they're going to come back and say, well, actually, there's a clause in my contract that says I can't, I can't uh, discuss that, well, I'm sorry, tough. So just to tell you exactly what the comments were that Paul Kimmage is referring to there, he was speaking, uh, well, the, the place where I read the comments anyway was with Ian O'Reard in the Irish Times. He might have been speaking elsewhere as well. And this was before the WADA ruling on Chris Froome, before WADA said it's okay for Chris Froome to ride in the Tour de France. So Dan Martin said, I'm not technically allowed to comment on it. The team told me not to, but I don't really care. We don't know anything, do we? It sounds horrible sitting on the fence, but we don't know the facts and it's hard to comment. It's a situation we, we're in. Nobody knows anything, not even his own teammates know anything. It's all kept very hushed. And when we find out the facts, then we can make a comment. But for the time being, either way, it's a mystery as to what seemed to have happened. I don't think it affects my race that much at all, whether he's there or not. I'm just going to focus on what I'm doing. And then if he is there, he's just one more person to beat. So I don't really care is the line that kind of stuck out to me there. I, I, think, I think that's slightly unfair, uh, unfair on Dan, though, as well. You know, he's... He, Maybe you know he's a cyclist. These are colleagues and peers of his. Like you know, he's he's not he's not condoning anything there. You know, no, of course he's not. I I wouldn't be too harsh on him. And and Paul Kimmage has obviously built a, a strong career around like you know go, going after cheats and and all that. And um, you know he obviously is still extremely vehement when it comes to stuff like that. But I wouldn't be too hard on Dan there. Yeah. The, well, the thing is, whenever I I see comes like that from any cyclist, and again, it's. If I saw this from a cyclist that wasn't Irish, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, the biggest problem with cycling over the past forever, really, has why been... It, why is his Irishness of any relevance? Because suddenly all... Are, like, to be fair... All is, all is fine. Yeah, like, all is fine. That, that's what you naturally think. No, that, that's not what you naturally think. You start to change your view on things because it's like, well, surely uh, one of our own countrymen, like... Would never. You would never. But that's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is about the quotes, about what... if Say if... I don't know, like a, a non-Irish cyclist said the exact same thing here. The first thing I'm saying is, well, the problem with cycling over the past forever, as I said, was Omerta. It's, mm -hmm. you know, like not saying anything about other cyclists. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, Dan Martin doesn't have to say anything. Uh, as you said there, he doesn't have to say anything. Uh, he's not the person under question here. It was Chris Froome under question and he doesn't have to, to kind of comment on it. But ultimately, that is the reason why cycling got was in a hole and dug itself deeper into the hole was because nobody was willing to speak out about it. But, yeah. you know, if, if you're in Dan Martin's position, what do you do? Like, just to 
just to kind of uh, finish up on this point, the Paul Kimmage piece from last year, as I mentioned, um, Paul Kimmage talks about joining uh, a new team in 2008 or up until 2008. So uh, Martin talks about uh, finishing second overall at the Val d'Aosta in Italy. Uh, Slipstream, which is an American team run by Jonathan Waters at the time, were at the race, and he got a call from them afterwards to turn pro. He didn't want to rush it. He'd only just started to be successful again and uh, didn't want to have pro and have his arse handed to him, as he said. So Jonathan agreed to delay it for a year. Kimmich says until 2008. Dan Martin says yes. Paul Kimmich says, was there any other suitors? And then Martin says, I probably could have gone to any of the French teams, but I respected the fact that Slipstream had come in first and their anti-doping philosophy, they were the first team to say, we are not going to use needles. We are not going to turn a blind eye to this. It wasn't popular. A lot of the other teams resented them for it, but it was exactly what I wanted to hear. So... Dan Martin has spoken about this previously and has said, this is my stance, uh, this is where I'm at, and you know, the unusual stance of a no-needles policy was something that I supported. So he's on the record as saying that, and maybe taking that into account, maybe that's why personally I'm looking at those Froome comments as a little bit disappointing. Sure, but sure, ultimately, sure. Ultimately, the, the, the one definite here is that we watched him on the, the Moor de Britannia yesterday with a sensational performance. It's going to be very interesting to see how he does as the tour moves into the Alps and to the Pyrenees over the next couple of weeks. It's a fairly gruelling tour coming up. They go to Roubaix in a couple of days as well, which is all cobblestone. So like, he could suffer a puncture, anybody could suffer a puncture and fall 10 minutes behind on the cobblestone. So anything is likely to change. It's a magnificent uh, achievement for anybody to, to win a stage of the Tour de France. Um, and as I say, himself and Sam Bennett really kind of casting a light on Irish cycling and the success stories this year. So there's, there's no question about that. They, they are the facts that we have uh, in front of us.